Have you ever noticed those circle things below the life bars during fights? Well, if most of your fights are big band mirrors, probably not. Okay, there it is. In any case, this is what this video is all about. What is up guys, and this is episode 7 of the Skullgirls Mobile Newbie Guide where I discuss all the buffs and debuffs in the game as of update 4.5. So I'm gonna start this video in a very counterintuitive way. I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that you do not need to watch this video. During a fight, if you wanna know what a buff or debuff does, you can just hit pause. The pause menu will then show you all active buffs and debuffs on each side and tell you what they do. In addition, there's a Skullgirls mobile wiki page which shows you all the buffs and debuffs currently in the game. I will leave the link in the description below, so let's check it out if you don't mind reading. But if you're just a bunch of lazy piles of poo poo, you can just keep watching this video while I spoon feed everything to you. You know what? Since you all need to understand the importance of reading, maybe I can just show you the wiki page and play some soothing classical music in the background to stimulate learning. Okay, you know what? Let's just stick to the original plan. So let's first go over all the buffs, starting with Enrage. Enrage is represented by the sword icon with the orange background. And this increases the fighter's damage output by 20%. This can be stacked up to 5 times. Next we have Armor. It is represented by the shield icon with a blue background and reduces damage taken by 20%. This can be stacked up to 5 times. This is one of the most common buffs used in defense to mitigate the opponent's damage output. Next we have Barrier, represented by whatever that is, a soccer ball? Each stack gives you a shield that can absorb damage equal to 10% of the fighter's max health. This can be stacked up to 5 times. In addition to the barrier icon, the shield will also be indicated in the form of a different colored life bar. It's also important to note that bleed and drain effects will consume the shield before the actual life bar. Next we have regen, which is represented by a white cross with a green background. Each stack heals at a rate of 1% of the fighter's HP per second and can be stacked up to 5 times. Not much to say about this one really. You just heal a bit of HP per second. Next up is Heavy Regen, represented by a green cross with a white aura around it. It heals at a rate of 2% of the fighter's max HP per second but cannot be stacked beyond the first one. Also important to note that regen and heavy regen stack separately and do not cancel each other out. Next we have haste represented by a white arrow pointing upwards surrounded by a blockbuster symbol with a purple background. It increases meter gain by 100% and can only be stacked once. Here's the buff in action. Thanks to haste, my Beowulf was able to use a blockbuster after just one combo. And for comparison, here's what the meter gain looks like without the haste. Next is Evasion, represented by this naked running man with a yellow background. Each stack prevents both damage and hit stun from the next incoming hit. Up to 5 stacks can be stored, and each hit evaded removes one stack. Next up is Unflinching, which is represented by the head of a penis. This causes a fighter to be immune from hit stuns, but not from damage. This is a buff that you have to see for yourself to understand, so here's some action in slow motion. So after Peacock gets the buff, notice how she's not reacting to the hits. This allows her to counterattack or block even mid-combo. Also note that unflinching has no effect when the fighter is airborne. It also has no effect when the fighter is hit by a blockbuster. So outside of these exceptions, be sure not to be overly aggressive against unflinching opponents. Special thanks to Nishera and Mopi for helping me make this segment of the video by allowing me to duel their untouchable peacocks. Next we have Final Stand, which is represented by the heart with a halo with a yellow background. By the way, in case you're wondering why I'm going out of my way to describe the icons, it's because visually recognizing them helped me a lot in keeping track of all the buffs and debuffs during fights. So I'm doing this just in case it ends up being helpful for you guys as well. Anyway. Final Stand keeps a fighter's minimum HP at 1 for as long as the buff remains active, as shown over here. This prevents not only fatal hits, 
but also any condition that can reduce a fighter's HP to zero, like Doom. Next we have Blessing, which is represented by wings on a yellow background. When a fighter with Blessing is struck by a fatal hit, they revive with 10% of their max HP per stack. Just like Final Stand, Doom counts as a fatal hit. Note that unlike Evasion, all active stacks are consumed at once. As you'll see over here, 3 stacks of Blessing results in a revival at 30% health. So what happens when a fighter has both Final Stand and Blessing at the same time? Final Stand prevents fatal hits by keeping the fighter's HP at 1, but Blessing can only activate when suffering a fatal hit. Because of this, the Blessing stack will not be consumed until Final Stand expires. Immunity is up next. This is represented by a white sea urchin with a yellow background. A fighter with immunity cannot be inflicted with debuffs. Take note, immunity only prevents new debuffs from being applied. It does not remove any pre-existing debuffs that were applied before the immunity was granted. Next we have Miasma. It is represented by white bubbles with a green background. When a fighter with Miasma is close to an opponent, they gain 1% HP per second while the opponent loses 1% HP. The same goes for Blockbuster Meter. This can be stacked up to 5 times. Now this buff has a lot going on at the same time and unfortunately, practice mode is really the only way to properly observe it. Notice how the doubles HP and Blockbuster Meter is ticking down while the Fuqua's meter is ticking up. If she had any damage on her, the HP bar will be ticking up as well. And notice how it stops after the Fuqua backdashes. Next we have Thorns, represented by a crown of thorns with a purple background. Each stack reflects 20% of damage received per hit and can be stacked up to 5 times. Thorns is pretty nasty. I mean, seriously. Look at this. She hasn't hit me once and I've lost more than 30% of my HP. Thorns is in my opinion one of the most dangerous buffs in the late game and has to be played around properly. And special thanks to Sophie XCPR who let me duel her criminal mind so I can record this. Next we have Precision, represented by the sniper scope thing. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, each stack guarantees the next hit to land a critical strike. In addition, this precision powered hit does not activate any defensive signature abilities. Notice how this precision hit prevented Last Hope from reviving. Special thanks to Scream Bean for letting me duel their last hope for this recording. Next we have Auto Block, which is represented by a hand with a blue background. It gives a fighter a 10% chance to automatically block a hit and can be stacked up to 5 times. This buff cannot generate a block when the fighter is hit in an airborne state. So here's the buff in action, and again in slow motion. For the last buff, we have Invincibility. Wow, that is huge. Represented by a sparkly diamond thing with curved sides. It prevents a fighter from taking any damage from hits, bleeds, or any drain effects. It still leaves the fighter vulnerable to doom, however. Oh, God damn it, Big Band! I can't see! Anyway, you get the point, right? She died even if she had invincibility. So that's it, I covered all the buffs. Hope you all learned something. Oh wait. Still have to do the debuffs. Oh boy. Let's start with Cripple, represented by the Broken Sword. By the way, I won't bother with the background color this time around because all debuffs as of this update have a red background. Anyway, Cripple reduces damage inflicted by 20% and cannot be stacked multiple times. It also directly opposes the Enrage buff. What this means is, Cripple replaces Enrage and vice versa. Opposing buffs are on a last come first serve basis. Whichever came later replaces the older one. Special thanks to Luis Dennis for letting me duel their sheltered for this recording. Next up we have Bleed, represented by the white droplet. Fighters inflicted with Bleed lose 1% of their max HP per second. It can stack up to 5 times and it also directly opposes both regen and heavy regen. If a fighter has either or both active, Bleed will remove both buffs simultaneously. Special thanks to Alex for letting me duel their bloodbath for this recording. Mmm, stunned Eliza, best waifu. Next we have Heavy Bleed, represented by the red droplet with a white aura. Heavy Bleed causes a loss of 2% max HP per second. 
It cannot be stacked multiple times but can exist alongside bleed. It also directly opposes both regen and heavy regen. Special thanks to Cerulean Mouse for letting me duel their buzzkill for this recording. Next we have Armor Break, represented by a broken shield. It increases damage received by 20% and can only be stacked once. And you might have already guessed, but Armor Break and Armor directly oppose each other. Next we have Slow, represented by a downward arrow in a blockbuster icon. It decreases meter gain by 50% and can be stacked up to 5 times. This directly opposes Haste. Next we have Wither, which is represented by a blockbuster icon that's getting Thanos snapped. This reduces blockbuster meter by 5% every second and can be stacked up to 5 times. So here's the debuff in action. Notice how the meter gradually ticks down. So special thanks to... Oh wait, that's... That's the uh, training dummy. Next we have Blockbuster Disable, which is represented by a padlock with a Blockbuster icon. It completely prevents Blockbuster usage while the debuff is active. Here it is in action, and notice how it also prevents meter gain. Next is Special Disable, which is represented by a padlock with a star. It prevents special move usage while the debuff is active. Here it is in action, and notice how it also stops the cooldown timer. Next up is Tag-In Disable, represented by a padlock with two opposing arrows. This prevents tag-ins during the debuff duration. While the debuff is active, the character icons of teammates will be blocked out as shown here. Next up is Heal Block, represented by a padlock with a red cross. It prevents any form of healing while the debuff is active. This one pretty much explains itself really. Next we have Inverse Polarity, which is represented by two arrows forming a circle with a cross in the center. It converts all healing effects into health loss. This includes regen, drains, and miasma ticks. Notice here how the Bio Exorcist Drain is causing her to gradually lose HP because of Inverse Polarity. Anyway, special thanks to Naruto180 for letting me duel their Bio Exorcist for this recording. Next we have Deathmark, which is represented by a skull with an X on its face. It increases damage received from blocking and from critical hits by 50%. Keep an eye out for offensive fighters who have access to Deathmark. If you give them additional crit rate, you will substantially increase their damage output. Next we have Power Surge, represented by a blockbuster icon with lightning in the middle. This debuff damages a fighter for 5% max health when activating a blockbuster. This can be stacked up to 5 times. Do not underestimate this debuff. If you're using a fighter that likes to string blockbusters together, you might be losing more health than you're comfortable with. Special thanks to someone118833 for letting me duel their overclock for this recording. Next up is Hex, represented by an eye with an X-shaped pupil. This disables signature abilities. This is a simple yet very powerful debuff that neutralizes some of the strongest fighters in the game. Take Dreadlocks for example, who normally punishes unprepared players with bleeds and damage reflex. But with Hex, she's just another punching bag. Special thanks to Martini Bun for letting me duel their Dreadlocks for this recording. Next we have Curse, represented by a pentagram. This debuff prevents the afflicted fighter from gaining additional buffs. Take note. Curse does not remove pre-existing buffs and only prevents new ones from being applied. Next up is Fatigue, represented by 3 Zs. This slows the cooldown of special moves and tag-ins by 50%. When the debuff expires, it then has a 50% chance to stun the afflicted fighter for 2 seconds. The active effect has a pretty low impact, but watch out for the possible 2 second stun at the end. In the late game, a lot of times, that's all the AI needs to abruptly end the fight. Next up is Immobilize, represented by an anchor. This prevents a fighter from dashing backwards or forward. It also prevents a fighter from walking forward when idling. Guard Break is up next, represented by a hand split in two. That's actually pretty morbid. It gives the afflicted fighter a 10% chance for the blocks to fail and can be stacked up to 5 times. Take note, this debuff directly opposes auto block. 
Alright, here it is in action. Alright, we're almost done. Next up, we have Doom, represented by a skull with red eyes. It is a debuff with no active effect, but causes instant death when it expires. We've been talking about Doom a lot throughout the video, so I'm sure you all know how it works by now. Just to review, fighters who are invincible still die to Doom. Fighters with Final Stand survive Doom with 1 HP. And fighters with Blessing consume the stacks and revive. In addition, any fighter with a signature ability that involves reviving after suffering a fatal hit will keep the fighter alive. So as you can see, nope, can't see it. No, I see a bit of it. Nope, there. Come on, man. All day, man. All day. Ugh. And finally, we have Stun, which is represented by a halo with two stars. A fighter who is stunned cannot perform any action while the debuff is active. But at this point, I'm pretty sure everyone and their grandmas already know. I mean, do I even need to show you guys what it looks like? Nah, what the hell. Oh, she's so beautiful. Alright, hold on a second. One last thing. There are three forms of buffs and debuffs and it'll probably be helpful if you understood how these work as well. The first one is timed, which is the most common. And these types of buffs or debuffs can be removed if they become directly opposed, removed by certain signature abilities like Silent Kill's Foggy Memory, or if the fighter dies, tags out, or when the timer expires. Second is Timeless, which have the same properties as timed buffs or debuffs except they don't expire over time. It's important to note that timed and timeless buffs or debuffs share the same stacks. Here's an example. When Flytrap kills an opponent, she normally gains 5 stacks of timeless regen like in the previous example. However, in this scenario, she already has 1 stack of timed regen. So, what happens after she secures a kill? Let's see what happens. So as you can see, she gets additional regen stacks, but the timed regen is still running its course. After it expires, she's left with only 4 timeless stacks. This shows that buff stacking is on a first come first serve basis, meaning if I wanted all 5 timeless region stacks, I should have waited for the timed one to expire first. Alright, last thing to discuss is the permanent buff or debuff which has this solid border around them. These stay in place even when fighters tag out and cannot be cleansed by signature abilities. They are, however, not permanent in a literal sense. Some of them still have timers on them or have special conditions to remove them. They are also lost when the fighter suffering from the debuff or buff dies. Another important thing to note is that permanent buffs have a separate stack from non-permanent buffs. This can be most commonly demonstrated with Bad Hair Day. As you can see, the permanent and non-permanent bleeds go to separate stacks. So that's it for all the buffs and debuffs in the game as of update 4.5. I hope no one leaves a comment here next year and asks, Hey, what about the latest debuff genital herpes? You forgot about that one. Again, this is until update 4.5 only. As new buffs and debuffs get introduced to the game, I will make separate videos about them and add their links to the description below. That's assuming I'm still around by then, but that's a problem for another day. For now, I've got you covered. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's a wrap.